Diablo 4 is once again drastically changing. Grandfather plus 300% damage? Don't mind if I do. Those unique changes are great and we'll go over them. But there's something better. We've increased the max level difference you can earn base monster experience from. This used to be hard capped. If you're level 50, for example, and you kill a level 60 monster, that's the optimal experience gain. If you then kill a level 70 monster, you wouldn't get more experience. Now that is drastically overhauled because you can kill monsters up to 30 levels higher and you still get a bigger base bonus XP. Which means as soon as you're world tier 4 and then reach level 60, put on your ancestral gear, you can start doing high nightmare dungeons and actually get a huge amount of XP bonus. And not only this, in Hell Tides, you can now stack three of these mine cages. That means with level 60 as well and three stacked mine cages, we can instantly get 925 gear. Perfection. I am not mad. I love this change. It's going to make leveling even smoother. And to enrich the level experience even more, we are again getting a reputation event, just like we had with the Iron Wolf last time. There is another bonus to this, though. First, we're going to unlock the seasonal quest, actually, through getting more reputation in the reputation board. And second, the more reputation you have, the more XP you will gain. We don't know the exact factor there yet, but it's actually worth it to do the side quests, to pick up experience, to kill monsters. And no, you don't just have to do hell tides this time. It's killing elites, champions, bosses, hellborn dudes pushing you. Everything gives you reputation this time. And at the end of the reputation grind is a resplendent spark again, and they confirmed it in the developer update. We can farm resplendent sparks with multiple characters again. If you want to get your Harlequin Crest, level a character from 1 to 60, push up your reputation. Level up a character from 1 to 60, push up your reputation. Four resplendent sparks. Boom, you get your first mythic. And yes, the uber uniques are now called mythical uniques. And just to give you a little teaser on the Harlequin Crest, that is now 1,800 max life instead of 1,5. It's 20% cooldown reduction, and you're straight up getting 2,500 armor plus. And you can equip this from level 35 on. By chance, if you find it early in the world, because Uber Unix can drop from level 35 on. Can't wait to level my first alt character with like two Uber Unix and just fly through the content. More great changes to come though. Enchanting no longer requires Angel Breath. Instead, it requires the legendary crafting material for the item slot. You might have not played Season 4, but let me assure you, you were always out of Angel Breath. This change is such a quality of life booster. Talking about quality of life and Hell Tides, Baneful Hearts drop now more again. In the PDR, they reduced the Baneful Heart drop rate, and it was kind of annoying to get them. And you only need two to summon the World Tier 2 and 1 boss. For World Tier 3 and 4, it's still three hearts. You will also always get three Grim Favors. So one whole Tree of Whisper from one subzone of the Helltide. That in itself might actually fix the gold shortage that we have been suffering from, but you do also have public world trading again. And as I mentioned, the Profane Mine Cage is returning, can be stacked three times to, well, get the maximum XP as soon as possible. I mean, technically with level 20, you can be fighting level 50 opponents. Infernal Hordes was an absolute lackluster experience on the PDR. What they did is they reduced the wave timer to 60 seconds. They increased the number of mobs tremendously that you're finally getting swarmed. But more important, Infernal Compasses can be acquired everywhere now. They drop from high tier Nightmare Dungeons, 4 to 8 drop from high tier Pids, Hell Tides are consistently dropping them as well, as do Whisper Caches, and Infernal Compasses can be crafted at the Occultist. They cost Forgotten Souls and Sigil Powder. After farming your Nightmare Dungeons, to get your Glyphs up, you can then simply craft them instead of grinding for them. Their goal is to give us around 5 per hour, and with the Infernal Hordes being shorter now, you can have a lot of fun per hour. On top, the loot in the Eternal Hordes generally get buffed. If you now do higher levels of difficulty, the amount of loot will aggressively increase that you're getting from the chest. And you only need 60 ether for the biggest crate instead of 150 ether. Not only that, more ether drops throughout the whole Infernal Hordes. And it's being automatically picked up by your pet. All these quality of life features will just simply streamline the whole experience and take the frustration and put the fun back into it. 
I'm talking about more fun. You know tormented bosses, right? That they always used to drop like one further boss material and it felt kind of useless to do a tormented Grigoire for one shard of agony. Well, that changed. Tormented bosses now drop five times the boss mats. I do a Grigoire, I get five shards of agony. I get five Mucus like X. And then I can already do a tormented Duriel out of the house. Not only that, every tormented boss has a 7.5% chance to drop a mythic unique. That's huge compared to the normal mythic drop chance that Duriel or Andariel just have. And good news for everyone else but Barbarian, because they're really admitted Barbarian is too strong. Finally, they, they set it out of the house. It's way too powerful, but they also don't want to ruin it. A first step will be buffing everyone else by giving them more damage per stat point. Which means that if the Necromancer has a thousand intelligence, he used to get a hundred percent bonus damage. Now with a thousand intelligence, it's hundred twenty-five percent bonus damage. The same for Mage and for Druid. Rogue is only getting about a ten percent increase in damage, but Rogue also has like three weapons instead of only two. And Barbarian stays at the same level with their core stats. Now a final great thing before we talk about some of the uniques in detail: the Pit got nerfed but buffed at the same time. Pit boss damage has been reduced by 66% across the board. Straight up less damage. Also from the shadow things coming down, not one-shotting you anymore. Great. But these shadows that get summoned give you a stacking damage debuff. And if that reaches three, you essentially get the same boss damage that you got last season. Which means we're starting easy into the fight. We're not going to get one hit anymore. We have some leeway. And if you then manage to get yourself a little bit beaten, if you step into the shadow pools, maybe you'll still get one hit at the end because you didn't pay attention. But now it's actually down to your gameplay and the RNG of just getting flabberblasted is getting taken out. Thank you. The developer note is explicitly stating that they made this change to reduce the amount of one shots that happen when fighting bosses in the pit. It's because it's simply frustrating. Now let's talk uniques and what they're doing. They definitely want to blow them completely out of the water. Old Grandfather was 100% crit increase, then we got 3000 life, 72 all stats, and 56% damage. Well, now it's 150% all stats, 3300 max life, the intrinsic value of Grandfather's 150% damage boost, and it has 300% damage boost on itself as well. That's such a huge buff to an already good weapon. Same goes for the Ring of Starless Skies. Had lucky hit chance, crit chance, and critical strike damage. Cool. Now it does. 17.5 attack speed, which is huge, and you can use it in so many more builds because of the attack speed. Critical strike chance almost triple, lucky hit chance double, then two core skills, and still the 50% multiplicative damage and resource cost reduction. Boy, oh, oh. The philosophy is simple. They want uniques to simply feel great and make builds absolutely incredible. The Staff of Endless Rage now gives you 170% fire damage instead of 35% damage to crowd controlled, 312 intelligence, and every 8 points of intelligence is 1% of damage now, not every 10 points, fireball projectile speed, double cast chance for fireball projectiles, and 6 fireball ranks. Holy moly. In total, just a build defining unique. You get the Staff of Endless Rage, you want to play Fireballs. It's not like, oh, I found this unique, it might be good. For Necromancer, they invented a complete new stat. It's called Blood Surge Drains plus three times from Elites. Blood Surge usually drains the opponent to get a damage multiplier. And against bosses, it was bad. Now Cruise and Breeze drains essentially another three times versus a boss, increasing your damage by 30 multiplicative versus bosses. And our Deathless Visage doing Bone Spear damage has a chance to cast Bone Spear twice. Don't mind if I do. Season 5 is going to be a very simple one. You're going to choose a core skill, mastery, or whatever you like, and then you really want to grind for the respect if you need, because it is going to be super build defining. Might it be overpower, critical strike, or whatsoever. Each of them has a lot to offer. It's not like the past season where you're just simply going to skip over them, because tempering is so much better. Especially if you need a skill that can cast double, and now the rogue bows have all... Barrage can cast twice, Penetrating Shot can cast twice. Any of them just simply works out of the house. Now don't worry, now don't worry. We'll have builds for every single class for you throughout the season and also level builds before the season starts. So have an eye on the channel and tell me in the comments below what you're planning to play and which unique blew you out of the water. 
Thank you for watching and have a fantastic good time.